Well, once again, good evening. Uh, time to move on from week two to week three. And this week, uh, like the others, this is going to be one of the weeks that's full of the most material. And, uh, and also we're going to be introducing what uh, I threatened right at the beginning, which is the the group project. So at the end of the unit, you're going to see the dreaded group project, and we're going to see how it's going to work. And uh, this is, as I said, a, a new one I'm trying out online for the first time. Uh, also trying a new feature of Blackboard today. Uh, I had Blackboard assign the groups at random. So when you check into the uh, the groups tab under tools, I believe it is on your your uh, menu bar on the computer, you should see you've been placed in a group and uh, uh, blame Blackboard, they did it. Uh, it's just a random selection and I'm going to explain how it works pretty soon. So uh, if anybody sees that they're not in a group, please get to me right away so we can uh, take care of that situation, okay? But uh, the reason I'm doing this, like I uh, may have mentioned before, um, a lot of people, uh, might as well go right into the explanation, a lot of people uh, dread working in groups, particularly online, you know, you get the, gee, one person does all the work and it's hell to coordinate and how, how are we going to do all this? Well, the fact of the matter is, if you go into the business world today, we do work in teams, we do work in groups, and a lot of them are what we always would bring uh, calling for years, virtual teams, you know, we're, we're not all going to be in the same office together. Um, part of your team is going to be in California, part of your team is going to be in, in, in New York, part of your team is going to be somewhere in Europe, and you're all going to be bringing yourselves together to work together, and this is just the way of the world and the way it is right now. So uh, my feeling is it's very important for us to kind of master this situation as an educational exercise and to do it now and get used to it because, basically, guys, this is what you're going to have to work with. So. That's one of the reasons I do this. The other thing, too, is working as part of a team and developing a strategy, to me, is pretty much the only way to go. Uh, strategy needs to be a collaborative effort. It needs to bring in many different viewpoints. I think you're seeing, and I'm seeing in the discussion board, how people are appreciating all the different elements that go into the construction of the strategy and how it's done. And to attempt to sit down and do it on your own is a very daunting task. And it's almost impossible, and I would say to attempt to do it on your own is almost foolish. So that's the way we're going to do the groups. So uh, I'll come back to those in a minute. Uh, let me talk back up a little bit talk about last week and what I'm still reading. I think I still have another 50 or so posts to read tonight, uh, and you guys are doing a great job. You're, you're saving me the work of having to dive in and, and push around because you're pushing each other with a lot of different questions, which is great. And I think uh, I, I didn't really try to stir up trouble like I did last week and, and asking a silly question or a, or a provocative question like the, the Tom Peters uh, Never Hire Any More of the 4.0 video. This was a little bit more straightforward. I uh, just wanted to reiterate, though, that Michael Porter's work has been around for a long time. Uh, that five forces model has proven to be very powerful and very lasting, and it affects the way a lot of people think about strategy. Uh, when we talk about competitive advantage, in, in the end, it is all about gaining a competitive advantage. But what I was trying to accomplish, and apparently it seems as we did accomplish that, is to get people looking at the differences and similarities of what's going on outside your company, what's going on inside your company. Is it the chicken or the egg, though? Does the, the outside factors drive what your strengths and capabilities are? Do your strengths and capabilities drive your responses to the outside factors? Is it a combination of both? A lot of things to think about. And several of you have addressed this directly in your posts where you said, you know, there really is no wrong or right answer. It depends on the situation. It depends on your company, where you want to go, how you want to get there. So what are we going to look at this week? Uh, this week's going to be a little different. I wanted to just give you a little tour. Uh, this week in Unit 3, uh, let me look over here to make sure I don't uh, uh, leave anything out. I'm going to start you off with a video from uh, John Cotter at the Harvard Business School about the importance of urgency. When do we need to do things? When is it important to do things? I think the title is self-explanatory, but really listen to Cotter 
as you start thinking about what you're going to be doing here, which is developing a strategy. How's it doing? Uh, next, I want to bring you to uh, a gentleman by the name of John Gersema. It's a talk he gave right in, oh, a year or two ago as we were sort of coming out of the, uh, the real shock of the last recession. And there are those economists who argue that it's not quite over yet. And I think anybody who's been out there looking for a job would argue the same. It's not quite over yet. But uh, Mr. Gertzema is going to present to you a bunch of new realities in the way individuals and, by extension, businesses are behaving somewhat differently than they did, did as little as two, three, four years ago. And I think you're going to find that very interesting. So even though what we'll be talking about in our case is not necessarily a consumer business, this consumer reaction he's going to be talking about is very interesting. I think it's going to help you start broadening your horizons on how you look at the issues of strategy. Next, um, a gentleman by the name of Rory Sutherland. Uh, this is from the TED series of, of talks, which I, I think are fantastic talks uh, that you can get in. If you've never surfed around the TED.com website, you, you can get an entire education by looking at that. But Sutherland is an interesting guy, and he's an advertising guy. He's British. He has a British sense of humor. Um, sometimes a little subtle, sometimes a little slap you right upside the head. I happen to appreciate British humor very much, so I, I think this whole video is hilarious. Um, but I'm not putting it up for the entertainment value. I'm putting it up for, again a different perspective on value creation. Listen to what he says about how value is created in the minds of the people who are uh, laying out good money to get that value. I think you're going to find this one very entertaining, but there's some pretty deep stuff in there too. And I'd like you to make sure you, you read it, I mean not read, watch it for the, uh, the depth of the message, not just the humor that's contained. Moving on, the text has talked about competitive edge. I'm going to talk about some things that came out of the text, out of the chapter four material. We had that value creation curve, that value creation horizon, and I'm going to talk to you about being on what I'm calling the edge, the competitive edge. What does it mean? What are some examples of companies who have been out there? What does it mean to you as you try to move a company either your own, uh, one you'd be thinking about, uh, any organization, can we move ourselves to the competitive edge and what it's all about? And is that the place to be? So naturally, the discussion board that follows is going to be all about being on the edge. Is that the place to be? Should you be there? What does it mean? What are the risks? What are the benefits? All these things. And, and try to bring in the perspectives that you you've been uh, reading about and looking at in, in some of the video messages. Finally, in the week's work, I have in here now the case, okay? And so what I've done is I've loaded up the case. The case is based on a true story uh, about a company that held a very dominant marketing position, and it was the pretty much the sole supplier of a certain product. And in this case, the, uh, this company is just humming along, doing great, and suddenly they're faced with a catastrophic event. And that catastrophic event is that the, uh, the factory, the prime location, burns to the ground. Absolutely burns to the ground. And they're faced with a whole bunch of decisions to make. Like, pretty much, oh my heavens, what do we do next? Well, this case, and, and I'll tell you the real name of the company was Malvin Mills, and it dates back to the early 90s uh, up in uh, Lawrence, Massachusetts. But uh, the case, and the real hero of the case, is a man by the name of Aaron Firestein. And Firestein was the owner and chairman of the, his family was the owners of the company. He was the chairman of the company. And he's very famous for, in the business world for some decisions that he made in the aftermath of the fire to keep the company going and the way he went about it. And actually, this case is almost exclusively written about from a business ethics point of view. 
And in doing some research and some studying on business ethics earlier this year, uh, it, it struck me that this was as much a case in business strategy, in strategic thinking and strategic development, as it was in bis business ethics. So I took the base facts of the Malden Mills case and rewrote them into this uh, fictional study based on the Malden Mills case, but approaching it from the problems of developing a business strategy. So as you read the case, you're going to see you're being placed in a role, and your role that you in your group will be playing are the role of consultants coming in at the moment of this terrible fire and trying to help this company, that uh, this fictitious company that I created, go on to the next move. So I'll be talking to you more about this as it comes along, but I want everybody to understand uh, because the natural temptation is going to be to dig in and do a little bit more research and see what's up there. But we are not going to be going in and uh, doing a report on what really happened uh, to Malton Mills. That's, that's not at all what we want here. What we want is your strategy for helping the company, in this case, go on and prosper, change, develop, redevelop, move, whatever. But to use all the techniques and all the models and all the things we'll be talking about for the first couple of weeks, this week, and for the next couple of weeks to, uh, coming ahead, uh, putting those all together as you formulate a big and massive strategy project. And we'll talk about the form that it will take. But this week's assignment is to kind of familiarize yourself with the case and to start familiarizing yourself with your group members so that you can look at what you're going to do and start asking the right questions. And then you're going to have about four or five weeks to uh, put the strategy together. And actually, that's not an unreasonable time frame in the way we're throwing projects in business today. Uh, the other reason I'm doing it the way I'm doing it, by the way, is I'm throwing this project at you uh, because I'm trying to simulate the business activity. And you know what happens, uh, all of you guys particular who are working or in the military or wherever, uh, you know what? You don't get to pick which problem you work on, do you? Your boss comes in and says, you know, Bill, here it is. Here's your problem for today. And you may think that this is the stupidest, most ridiculous thing you've ever saw. Right? But guess what? You have to do it because that's your job. Well, it will be interesting to see what you think about this case. But I'm telling you, you have to do it. And that's what we're going on here. That's the simulation uh, aspect of the whole deal. So I'm sure there will be a ton of questions, and I'll be ready to answer them for you. Um, I, I hope if you do have any questions, please send them to me or post them. Uh, let me know if that random selection tool worked and that we got some effective groups to put together. Uh, take a look at the material, the discussion board. Once again, I, I really want to compliment this group. It's been fantastic. Really like it. Uh, I tried to get the, the first week, so I'll try to be a little faster this week on getting the grades now that the graduations and everything are over. And uh, I, I do try to put in a comment with every every week's grade so that you, you have a really good feel of uh, how you're doing and how things are going. Uh, please don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Uh, email is probably the best way. Uh, I'm not quite in the office as much as I thought I might be, uh, but we're, we're going to go on from there. Okay, uh, any questions, like I said before, please get to me. Thanks for all the hard work. I'm sure we're going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting as we now go forward into some more concrete examples of strategy development and start putting them to use in, in, in the case study. Okay, thanks very much.